Hi, my name is Jack Ridge and I'm a geologist in the Department of Earth and Ocean Sciences at Tufts University. And I've been doing field work in the Fells to try to understand the geology, uh, especially making a geologic map of the area. Most of the time when I'm in the field and I talk to people, they have the sense that all the rocks in the Fells are granite, but that's not true. There's lots of other rock types and lots of other rock formations in the Fells that depict a very exciting history, mostly from back in what's called the Precambrian or the late Proterozoic, about 550 to about 630 million years ago. So we're here uh, above Woodland Road on the Rock Circuit Trail, and the rocks here are not granite, they're volcanic. So granite is a magma body that crystallizes in the subsurface, and you get large crystals of mostly quartz and feldspar in that um, situation. But sometimes the magma reaches the surface and we have different igneous rocks called volcanic igneous rocks. They can be of two types. They can either be where the magma comes out onto the surface and starts to flow, or they can be a situation where material is blown into the air and then lands and accumulates on the land surface. And that's what we call a pyroclastic uh, igneous rock. So pyroclastic volcanic rocks can have four components in them. Most pyroclastic rocks have a component which is volcanic ash. And by volcanic ash, we just mean really fine particles that were blown into the air. Most of that material is glass. So what is glass? Well, glass is uh, magma that has been shot into the air that has not had an opportunity to crystallize, to actually form quartz and feldspar crystals. So we don't consider it mineral material. It lands on the land, uh, land surface and it accumulates. Sometimes it accumulates while it is still molten coming out of the air. And what happens is all that material sticks together, really sticky, and forms uh, what we call a welded tuff. And that's what this rock is here. So this gray material that you see here as the background is the fine uh, volcanic ash. It's the glass material. And there are also some really tiny mineral grains, broken mineral grains that are in that material. So that's one component. Now sometimes the glass comes out as large fragments or blobs that are shot into the air. And they also land on the land surface. Sometimes they're full of bubbles a material that we call pumice. And when other material lands on the pumice, it flattens it or collapses it, just like stecking, stepping on a packing peanut. And so that's what these black things are on the rock. These are flattened pumice fragments. And you notice that in some places they have these uh, pinched edges. So that tells you that you're dealing with something that has been flattened or squashed. Another component that you can see here are these tiny white specks those are crystals. Those are crystals of feldspar that were starting to form in the magma and then the eruption occurred and it blew those out along with the glass or the magma that had not yet crystallized. Now most of these crystals have some flat faces on them, crystal forms, but many of them are broken, which is a good indicator that you're dealing with a pyroclastic deposit. So the fourth component that occurs in pyroclastic volcanic rocks is what we call lithic fragments. And these are fragments that are picked up by the magma from solid rock formations that the magma passes through. Now most of the time, this is older parts of the volcanic complex from earlier eruptions. And what is true about volcanic eruptions, they never occur just once in the same place. You have multiple eruptions from the same center. So right here, we have a light-colored angular fragment of volcanic rock that is in the surrounding pyroclastic material. That's a good example of a lithic fragment that is a piece of volcanic rock picked up by the magma. Now, the magma is coming from pretty far beneath the surface, and it can pick up older rock formations. There's even pieces of quartzite and granite that are in this rock formation picked up from older units in the subsurface. So there's a, another good one over here just around the corner on this face. They show up really nicely as these angular pink fragments that you see here. So uh, on the upper face we had a big 
uh, lithic fragment, but down here on the side face, you see some really clean pink lithic fragments. These angular fragments are pieces of volcanic rock that were picked up by the eruption. These are older volcanic units and deposited within the ash and the crystals as a pyroclastic unit. So as a geologist, what we often do is collect samples of this rock and look at them in a microscope. We take very, very thin slices of the rock and we look at them in a, what's called a petrographic microscope that takes advantage of polarized light. When we look at the rock in that microscope, we don't see any glass. So how can that be the case if most of this material was glass when it was deposited? Well, if you keep glass at a relatively high temperature, over extended periods of time, what it will do is actually crystallize after it has become a solid or after it's uh, solidified. And it turns into really tiny quartz and feldspar crystals that you can see in a microscope. So the glass is no longer glass. And that's a very common thing with volcanic rock formations that are this old. If you want to learn more about Professor Ridge's research on the geology of the fells, including a map and self-guided geologic hikes, follow this link to his website.